How's it going guys? So this is the very first episode of TMA, which is the morning after. And today we are going to talk about UFC 219th, which is headlined by Derek Lewis versus Curtis Blades. And you guys, um, spoilers alert, if you have not, you have uh, a few seconds to, to turn away. If you have seen it, which you should because today is Sunday and the fight take on Saturday. It was on Saturday. So hopefully this is nothing new. Okay. All right. I'll give you a few more seconds and we are going to jump right into it. Okay. So that should be enough time. And here we go. So UFC, UFC Las Vegas 19. It's take take place at Las Vegas, Nevada, on February 20, 2021. and it was headlined by Derek Lewis taking on Curtis Blades, and the results are as as follow. You can see at the bottom of the screen as well. And you guys, I am just going to announce the result for the main card only, not the whole entire card. All right, so we're going to start off with um, Tom Aspinall defeat Andre Alaski via. Submission, Rear Naked Choke, Round 2, 1 minute and 19 second. Next one we have um, Phil Hall, Defeat, Nasruddin, Emanov, Majority Decision, 29, 20 twice, and a 20, 20 draw. Next we have um, Chris Dukas, Defeating Alexi Olenek, First Round TKO, 1 minute, 55 second into the round. Next we have Derek Minner defeated Charles Rosa, 30-26, 30-27, and 29-27. And on to the co-main event, we have Yana Kuniskaya defeating Kilet Vieira, unanimous decision, 29-28, all across the board. And heading on to the main event, Derek Lewis defeating Curtis Blade, Knockout, second round, 1 minute and 26 second. Also, you guys, um, I will also do um, a quick announcement for the bonus of the night, 5 tonight, and the performance of the night as well. There are 4 for that night. And each fighter will receive an additional $50,000 for their performance, for their bonus. And, of course, the first one is the, the main event. Derek Lewis will, will be receiving $50,000. Also, um, Chris Dusak, and also um, Tom Aspinall, and finally the fourth one is Admin Sahabi. So each of those guys were receiving fifty thousand dollars as well. Okay, so this is my quick thought on the fight that night, and if you guys have not seen it on my spotlight, I made a quick quick, quick video for the spotlight. Highlighting, highlighting which um, fighter that we should keep our eyes out for and you guys I was picking Curtis Blade to beat um, Derek Lewis in this one it's just the fact that Curtis Blade before going into this fight he was riding a sorry he's running a four fight win streak which with a record of eight and one within his last nine fight and also that the last person who beat him within that stretch of nine fight was the current the current title challenger, challenger to the U, UFC heavy title, which is um, Francis Ngannou. And oh my goodness, I thought that fatigue. I thought, I thought that cardio was going was going to be an issue. And we did not have the opportunity to see that because it just the way that. It's just the way of how the, the fight ended. And I like making I like making these predictions because I like to forecast, I like to predict the future. And you guys, I was wrong in this one. I mean, during the first run, round, Dirk Lewis, he, he came out, he looks really good. But it just um one stiff uppercut. It seems it seems like it was a short uppercut. From Der Derek Lewis that put him out, put him straight out, and that was, yeah, look at that. He was out cold, he was out stiff, and I am impressed. 
I am impressed with Derek Lewis, not just with this with this performance right here, but also within his previous performance as well. But also going through this fight, I kind of thought that that Curtis Blade was. You know what? I kind of thought, I kind of thought that Der- Der- Derek Lewis does not have the. I'm trying to choose my word wisely. I don't want to say skills. I don't want to say strength. I don't want to say power. Because we obviously know that he's got all that. Because, I mean, he is, he, he's in the UFC for, for a reason. So, yeah. So, I got that one wrong. And if you guys see my video on, on the previous one as well. And that was the only fight that I picked. Because, well, <laughs> truth be told, I wasn't really interested in any other fight. Because... It is where it is. I'm not too familiar with the rest of the fighter on this card. The only one that I kind of am familiar with was um, Yana, Yana Kuniskaya. I think that's how I say her name. It's just the fact that she was also a former um, uh, title challenger. And she was fighting... Let me have a quick look here. I want to say Amanda Nunes. Amanda Nunes. And we all know what happened there. Let me have a quick look. Is it a man in news? It might have been. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It was um, Chris Cyborg at UFC 22 on March 3rd, 2018. And we all know what happened there. It was a brutal knockout for um, for Yana. Is it Yana or Yana? I'm going to go with Yana. And I realized that after that, she's been on this a bit of um, two wins, one loss, two win. And with this one right here, well, this is her second win in a row. She is essentially with this one right here. She is 4-1 and one within the last five. And unfortunately, her debut in the UFC was against... Um, Chris Cyborg, and that was for her was um, unfortunate. I believe that she got paid, very, she got compensated well. So, yeah. And you guys, so what's next after this? What should be next for um, Derek Lewis? Because uh, on um, UFC fighting, on his um, pre-fight interview, he did mention that, including this fight right here, he does have. One more fight, sorry, two fights, including this fight that he just finished, that he just competed at, at UFC Las Vegas 19. So he does have one more fight left within his contract. And I saw the article today of how he of how he would like to fight um, Alistair o- o- Overeem. I guess interesting that I think. This is the reality of the situation for me. I believe that Alex Overeem is at he's on the tail end the tail end of his career. He doesn't have that much left in him, and especially within his last fight, he just got destroyed. And he and, and Alex did mention that this is his final run at the UFC um, heavyweight title. And if you guys if you would put him up against Derek Lewis right now, I believe that Derek Lewis he is a, he is a, an entertainer. Who, who does not like his antic? Who does not like him as a persona, him as a fighter? I realize that I am going a bit on, I am going a bit on my word. It's the fact that you guys call me a hater for picking against him. But how, that's what I did. I did pick against him because I, I thought that he, that he was going to lose. He was going to lose to Derek Lewis. But as of right now, if you would ask me, who do, who do, you, think I, who, who do you think that I believe is going to win against Derek Lewis? against um, Alistair Overeem. It's very, very difficult right now to pick against um, Derek Lewis. And right now, if, the, if that fight does happen, I, I am not going to pick, uh, pick against uh, Derek Lewis. Because as of right now, he is on a 4 fight winning streak. And his last 4 win was against Volkov, Evanov, Ir- Irila Tifi, Alexei Olenek, and of course last night um, on the 21st, he did beat Chris Blade 
one one minute twenty second into round two. Like, like I said, it's tough to not be on the bandwagon for this guy. He is a character. He's a beast. He fights. He fights well. So yeah. Who knows? Like with this one right here, he is on a four fight winning streak. He might be on a he is on a, a bit of a resurgence as well. And if he does beat the next um fighter, the next the next opponent, let's just say he does fight Alistair Overeem. That will put him on a short list to be the next challenger for the UFC um heavyweight title. As we know as of right now, the UFC heavyweight title is being contested at UFC two sixty. Which is Stipe Stipe taking on Francis Nagano, and also I'm not sure. And also he does have a bit of a history against Francis Nagano, which he beat. So I would like to see that as a as a rematch. They fought on UFC 26, July 7, 2018, and that was a unanimous unanimous decision for Derek Lewis. But I'm looking at, at his record right here. He has not fought Stipe. <laughs> okay, so I am going to make another fight prediction. Like, a f I'm going to make another future forecast. Is that... You guys, I don't like to pick against some Stipe Miocic. But in this case, I am. I am going to pick against him. It's just the fact that he is not just a UFC fighter. But he is also a, a fireman. And the, re the reason why I am bringing this up is that I believe that if Stipe win this fight coming up, the UFC title, the UFC heavyweight division will be stuck on hold. It will drag and it will not, there will not be as much or as many title fight in the, U UFC, in the UFC division as I would like it to be. I realized that that it's just me being selfish as a fighter, but I watch this. I want to be entertained, and I want to see the best fight the best. And I believe as for right now, Stipe he is the best because he is the champ. And I would like the champ to be more active. And for him being a full time fighter fighter as well, if he does beat Francis, I don't think he should be. I don't. I'm not gonna say I don't think. I honestly believe that he's not gonna be as active as. The UFC would like like him to be. While the other hand, if if Francis Ngannou beat um Stipe Miocic, I believe that he will be more active because essentially this is all he does. Fighting is his life. Fighting is what he does for a living, and fighting is what he is known for. And he did mention previously that he would like to be an active champion. So after that being said, at UFC two hundred and sixty coming up, I am rooting for. Uh, Francis Francis Ngannou, like I've mentioned previously, it just it is for a selfish reason, and I am not going to deny that because it is what it is. It is what it is, and I am, and I am gonna stick with that. So, yeah. But besides that, I am looking forward to this. Uh, this like I said, like this division, a lot of good fights are coming up, and. Yeah, so on the, the flip side, I did mention that Andre Orlowski has lost in this fight as well. And that was a round two win naked choke to Tom Aspinall. And you guys, for Andre Orlowski, he's been competing, he's been very active for a very long time. He is a, he was a former UFC heavyweight champion. And he's not getting any, any younger. I believe he is 36 right now. Just let me have a, a quick look here. But he's... Tom is not on his side, unfortunately. Tom is not on his side. And I don't know how much longer he should be fighting. But who, who, who am I to say? I mean, he's been doing this for a very long time. It... It was disappointing for me. It was it was hurt. It hurt for me to see him lose because I like to share. I like to root for the old guard. And as I am looking at his UFC record, 
He made his debut on, on UFC 28 high stake. And in that event, he was the, the headliner, which, uh, sorry, he was not. But however, he won round one armbar at UFC, UFC 28, November 17th, 2000. That is 11 years ago. And the last, last fight, which is last night, he lost. And then he went on a two-win a two fight win streak when he beat him Tanya Boser, Philip Lin. Then he lost to Yerho, Yers, Yersinho Rosen streak. Then he beat Ben Rothwell. And then he on uh, then he was on a four or three fight losing streak with one no contest. This guy, he has just been jumping back and forth, back and forth. So, and what do I like to see next from him? Okay. I do not like. I do not want the UFC to cut him from from the roster, for the reason that I just pre 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 previously mentioned. It's just the fact that, you guys, I am a fan of his. I would like to see him compete and do well. And as of right now, the real reality of the situ situation is that the UFC is where he can make the most of of his money. And I don't know if, let okay, let's just imagine. That he does get cut. I don't. I don't believe that he is going to get cut. You know, it's just the fact that it's only one one loss, and previous before that he was on a three fight losing streak with one no contest, and they did not let him go. And like I mentioned just a few seconds ago, he before this loss right here, before this loss last night, he was um, three and one, three win one loss in his previous four, like not including the one last night. So. Looking this right here, that, that does not seem like it was. That does not seem like it's a bad record for in in my eyes. But I don't know, man. Father time is catching up, and Father time is undefeated. Okay, let's uh, let's play the what if game. Let's just imagine, or let's say, what if, what if the UFC does cut him? Where where will he go? Well, I know where I don't want him to go, and that is some um, bare knuckle fighting, because that is that organization to me in my mind. It's just way too brutal. And I saw the fight last week or the week before when um, Bret Hart taking on um, Pitch Van Sang. That looks uh, that looks brutal. I I I did not find that entertaining at all. I do not find um, bare knuckle fight, fighting entertaining. I, I think it's very, it's too savage for my liking. That's that just it. It's too. Yeah, it just I don't find it entertaining. It's just too brutal. So let's take that off the off the table. I do not want him to go see. I, I do not want him to go to, bare knuckle fighting. So for Andre, there is in my mind there's only two, in North America, and that is Bellator. And the and the PFL. So, and as of right now, the the Bellator the champion um, Ryan Bader he is entering the Bellator light heavyweight tournament. So the Bellator um heavy heavyweight tournament is a, it's a bit of of an open field. It's a bit of wide open because at any given day as well during that during that um within that heavyweight division, anybody could be any, anybody. Including. Uh, Excuse me, including Ryan Bader, he could lose to I said um Chuck Conco as well. And I could see him making a bit of an impact. But however that will be Bellator would be my second second choice for Andre Lasky. My first choice would be the PFL. Enter the enter the tournament. I'm sure that he will get a nice contract by just signing with the uh, with the PFL, because also the PFL they it, it was just announced that they did went to a round of fundraising and they receive quite a bit of money. The amount I cannot remember right now, but they did receive quite a bit of money, and also I believe that Andre Lasky will have a better opportunity of winning the PFL tournament than. He would have the opportunity of winning the um, Bellator have have championship because as right now their reigning champion is um, 
like I said um, just a few seconds ago, uh, is that Ryan Bader and Ryan, Ryan Bader, he's still he's still in his prime, he's up there. Okay, so how old is Andrzej Lasky? He's born on February 4th, 1979. So that's 42? Wow. He's 42 years old. 42 years old. He's been, he's been doing this for a while. So, how much longer do I believe he's got left in the tank for him? Five? 47? I've seen him fight till he's 47 years old. Yeah, because, well, I believe that that guy is, he's got the, he's got this um, fighter fight, fight mentality and I realized that he's been, he's been taking a lot of wear and tear on, on his body. And there has been a few fighters that has competed in the heavyweight, in the heavyweight division in their mid 40s, which is one of them that came to my mind is, um, Randy Couture, I believe he competed until he's 45 years old, so I could see Andre Lasky going down that path as well. So, yeah. So, Andre, so just a quick recap, Andre Lasky, I did not want the UFC to cut him. I like, watch, I, like watch, I like watching him compete. I would like for him to stay in the UFC, but I don't know how many fights he have left in his contract. So we'll see what happened going on to, going into the near future. Uh, Yana Kuniskaya, nice win. She is on with this one right here. I believe she's on a three fight win streak. I hate this because I can't remember this. It is a Sunday morning, and I am hungover. Sorry, yeah. So she's on a two fight win streak with this one right here, four and one within the last five. So I'm looking forward to who they. Who they're who they're gonna match her, her up against, and I believe that this one right here it took um. It was at flyweight, which is at one twenty five, so we'll see what happened there, and for Deck Lewis. You know what, give him um Alistair Overeem, give him Alistair Overeem, for his last fight in within his contract, I think that is gonna be, one hell of a fight as well. I don't think Alistair has ever fought um, Derek Lewis, but I think that that is going to be a fight fight. Give him, um, do it. Yeah, just give uh, Alistair Derek Lewis. Once again, that's just me being selfish with the fight making because, you know, that's what I like to do. So you guys, after that, I am going to wrap this up. Thank you for joining me on this Sunday afternoon. Like I said, I am hungover. And join me tomorrow, which is Monday, the twenty second, for an early for a morning edition of MMA in the morning. And you guys, um, thank you once again. Thank you for joining me. You guys, take care. Be safe. Be good. If you can be good, don't get caught. That those are the rules. Um, stay inside. Quarantine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for joining me guys and I will see you tomorrow.